Okay. Oh, I put this reminder up here and it worked. I remembered <laughs> to announce the last, all my shirim are, are on hiatus for the last two weeks of January. So the next scheduled time that we have this year is uh, February 1st. Okay. So the next two Mondays, no um, Monday night Mishle year. Um, so that's that. Okay. So new Pasuk, uh, as always, 10, 12, Yud, Yud Beis. Uh, Sina Teorer Midanim, uh, Tachase Ahava. Who would like to translate? And whoever does, just remember that Midanim does not mean Midianites, that would be Midianim. Strife, strife, strife. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good translation. I'll try. Go ahead. Uh, hatred arouses strife. Okay, good. Borrowing that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and on all sins, uh, love covers. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to just, I think that's a good translation. I'm just going to modify a few things uh, for nitpicky reasons. Strife is good, but the fact that it's using midanim plural wants me to translate it in a way that I can pluralize it. And strifes is not a thing. So uh, the other meaning is quarrels. Okay, so I'm gonna say quarrels here. Um, and, uh, and you know, strife is a good thing to have in mind, but I'll say quarrels that way I can pluralize it. And then, um, and then grammatically or syntactically, I mean, then I think we would say love covers all, sorry, covers all sins. Instead of on all sins, love covers. That's just not how we speak in English. Uh, all sins. And then Pesha'im. So sins is a good generic translation. If Pesha means something specific, then, um, oh, sorry, sorry, let me back up for a second. Sins, offenses, I think is a, is a good word here. Um, if Pesha is specific or technical term, uh, what, what would it mean? Uh, there's two technical meanings that are almost opposites. Can you translate it as negligence? Yes, one is negligence. Uh, I guess um, actually, I'm, I'm going to have that last. Okay, um, uh, instances of negligence. Oops, negligence. Yeah, and what is another? Uh, like when you say "chatasi avisi pashati" in vidui. I thought pesha is like lahaches. Yes, it is. So rebellions. Okay. So th that's what I mean by they're almost opposites. Okay. So sins and offenses are th the two generic meanings. Um, and then rebellion, rebellious offenses, and then uh, negligent offenses are the, uh, those are the, the technical terms. Um, I actually don't know whether the negligence is used, whether that's just a rabbinic usage or uh, it's also in Tanakh, but uh, definitely rabbinically is used that way. Okay. So let's just do our, uh, our uh, minimalist translations here. Translation seems simple compared to previous weeks, uh, recent weeks. Okay, Mitzus Tion says, uh, Midianim, or sorry, Midanim, <laughs> Miloshan Madan Umriva. So he says it comes from strife, like uh, Ariel said. Okay, so that we can uh, we can just delete here. And then, um, uh, oh, you know, I always I always copy and paste the target, but I forgot to look it up. Sniasa Tagarag Tigre, El Tigre, the Al Kulhon Surhane Mahasa Rahamusa. Um, yeah, I think this is just a straight translation here. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna delete that. Okay, and then we have Art Scroll says hatred arouses strife, but love covers all offenses. Hate uh, living not, hatred stirs up quarrel, but love covers up all faults. That's interesting. Faults is another one. Okay, I, I don't like fault so much because fault implies like um like uh, a, like a defect type fault. Uh, at least when I read it, hatred foments strife, but love covers up all misdeeds. Eh, I don't like foments. To or is either awaken or arouse. Uh, stirs up is also fine. Um. Yeah. All right. So I, I think we're, we're good enough with our translation. All right. What are the questions here? I have a, a feeling, by the way, that this puzzle, I, I have this feeling every night that I give Sheer here, but I feel like this puzzle is going is to be very simple uh, and, and we're going to get it really fast. So that's my fear. So I just want to throw that out there. Is it good that love covers all sins? Okay, good, good. So, um, is uh okay let's put it this way okay is this 
Yeah, yeah, let's put yeah, let's put the way through it. Okay. Is is love covering all offenses uh a good thing? <laughs> okay. Um, in other words, and I'll, we'll ask this now structurally, okay, is this a uh, good half, bad half, Pasuk, or are both halves bad? Yeah, what would lead you to believe, so if we had to spin it one way or the other, like just to get a, 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 a simple, um, uh, straightforward meaning, how could love covering all sins be good and how could it be bad like just just simple meaning not ideas well i mean i mean if you really love someone it could blind you in determining if they're actually a good person or not right so this uh so so that would be uh if it blinds you then that's bad um uh you know who fell prey to this one our uh, our old buddy marcus aurelius uh is his wife and son were not good people and uh, uh, and were manipulative and politically scheming, and uh, and the entire empire fell down uh, after that. But he thought that she was a lovely, faithful wife who was nice. And and his son, uh, he had a blind spot for his son. Also, his son was like a jerk. But uh, you know, but Dovin Mel had the same problem. Also, he had a son who was a jerk, and uh, you know, had uh, his love covered all offenses, and that was uh, that was bad. Son tries to kill you is a, is a uh, usually a sign that you did something wrong in your parenting. Um, Okay, so what would be the good way to say uh, that love covers all offenses, or to say that it's a good thing? If you um, make mistakes and offend people, um, but you have good intentions and you show love towards people, then it okay. could make a difference. Yeah, good, right? It's like when it comes to forgiveness, when it comes to like, you know, giving people second chances, then 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 overlooking offenses is good. And in fact, we had um, this morning, whoever is here from this morning in our morning mission last year. <clears throat> we had uh, overlooking offenses, according to Rabbi as one of the highest levels. You know, so that seems like a good thing. And if love helps you do that, then love is a good, then then that's that's a good thing. Okay, good. All right, what are the, I guess that would also yeah uh, depend on how you uh, translate Pesham. Uh Yes, that's also true. Right, right. If you're overlooking rebellions. Um, well, that's in the news cycle right now, <laughs> you know, are, is America going to overlook the rebellion or not? Seems trending. No, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Uh, but you're right. It, it, it depends on whether you're uh, looking at uh, how you translate that. Okay. Other questions on the Pasuk. Overlooking uh, faults, but means you recognize them. That's also true. Pasuk, right. In this particular Pasuk, you don't recognize it. Oh, okay. Good. So that raises the question, what does cover mean? Okay. So, um, so cover to me, you know what? We're going to use two words, two possible possibilities here. Okay. So cover could mean that you notice it and then cover it, you know, but conceal might lean much more towards the blind spot interpretation, you know? Um, could uh, cover also mean smother? Smother? Uh, yeah. Yes. Right. We just had that with um, a couple of Pesukim ago. That the Pirashaim Tachase Hamas, that the mouth of the wicked is smothered by their violence. Yeah. Um, so it could be cover like to, um, okay, it's fine. So smother. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It sounds weird when I say it like that. Love smothers all faults. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what does Tachase mean? Okay, good. Oh, and then I'll just I'll add in the note that Leslie uh, addressed is, what knowledge, uh, sorry, does the, um, does, excuse me, the, the person who, who uh, covers, uh, who covers have knowledge of the offense? Yeah. I thought he was saying not the person who's covering, but the person who's, it's being covered from. Oh, is that? Hmm. I guess, uh, yeah. Okay. So let's, let's formulate this in a broader way. Okay. Let, let's just let's say this. Okay. What does cover mean? Uh, from whom, who is it, is, is, is it being, who is it being covered from? Okay. Um, does that person have knowledge of it? Right. Okay, good. 
also just an observation. I think that it's really interesting that, I mean, maybe this is a little similar to the first question, but I think it's interesting that it's hatred and love. Whereas I feel like a normal quote unquote Michelet Pasek would be more like kind of, I guess more of an action. Whereas this is like a very, both strong emotions. Okay, I hear. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I guess the question here is, so I get, he, let, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll cast a, a wide net here for this is, um, what is the practical application of this Pasuk? Um, and then I'll add, given that um, the, the Pasuk is just talking about the emotions themselves without spelling out the their um their intended uh, without spelling out hold on without spelling out the 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 yeah the the yeah the the, the practical practical yeah practical. also just to further it a little i think also i feel like it's usually like an action being done or like don't do this action or do it but i yeah. feel like it's not usually like a mindset thing right right yeah that, that's a good observation i have a question yeah is quarrel supposed to be like, like the opposite? Uh, well, it's not the opposite, but like, is this supposed to be the same type of thing as sins? Like, why is it like, when I read it, I assumed it was like, hatred does this one thing and love does like this yeah. opposite thing. Okay, so, so like, what, what so let, let me, I'll, I'll also ask that in a broad way. What is the relationship uh, between the two halves? Uh, are they opposites? If so, what is the, so if they're opposites, it's clear how hatred and love are opposites. But then what Schiffer is asking is how, uh, what is the, the relationship between um, the, the quarrels and the offenses? Yeah. Okay. What else? Is the hatred, um and the love directly or indirectly in, indirectly related to the quarrels and whatever it's concealing. Meaning if a person is, is his statement saying, if you hate someone, you'll fight with them. Or is this statement saying, if you hate anything, you'll fight with anyone. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if there, I feel like there are a couple of, uh, a couple of questions nestled into that one. So let's start off with the, what is the cause and effect relationship between the hatred and the quarrels? That's going to be a question we have to face no matter what. Okay. Then we have the question of, um, let, let's just say like, what are these quarrels? <laughs> okay. What are these quarrels? And, and um, I'm going to put this here because I think it's part of the same question. What does it mean for them to be awakened? What, what does that imply to you, awakened? I mean, I, I take it as instigated, meaning like someone who's irritable is more likely to get into fights during their day. So uh -huh. that irritability is arousing more quarrels. Okay, so I think of it in a different way, uh, and I'm not saying that that's wrong. Anyone else have a different uh, read on uh, awakens or arouses quarrels? By the way, that's that's with the assumption that it's an indirect relationship. Obviously, I would adjust it if mm -hmm. I was saying it's more right. direct. It could be like ignites quarrels. Yeah. See, I, ignites quarrels. I would I would I would be more on board with what Zach is saying. Um, that it starts them. But I think there's another way to read it, which is not a stretch, that it doesn't start them. Anyone want to say? Rekindles them? Yeah, rekindles them. Is Awakens implies that they were asleep, right? Or that they were latent somehow. Like they're there under the surface or they're not active and you're bringing them up, you know? Um, so like there are psukim that talk about starting quarrels uh, and I don't know what, what metaphors it uses there, but awaken means that it's asleep, you know? So, so I, I guess the question I'm going to add on to here is, um, did these quarrels, uh, already exist in some form, uh, and are just being, uh, uh, awakened or does awaken, uh, sorry, awakened by the hatred. 
of hatred, or does awaken um, initiate the quarrels, initiate slash create the quarrels? I would tentatively suggest, and we can get to it later when we go into like trying to come up with ideas, but that they're not mutually exclusive, the idea. That is a good possibility, right? So, uh, or both. Yeah. Um, okay, good. And then, and then, and then similarly, you could ask about the, uh, the love and the, the covering. So I, I guess, okay. I, I think we needed a new set of questions on the love, but I think the, sorry, the back one second, I think there's one more question we could ask on the hatred, uh, arousing the quarrels. A basic question. Like how does it do so? Like what's the cause and effect? Uh, yeah, uh, we said that already in five. The reasonableness. Uh, okay, the reason, what do you mean by the reasonableness? Meaning is it something that's like objectively offensive or is it something that's being construed that way because yeah, of the hatred? So Let's broaden it, broaden it like this. What is the nature? What is a quarrel? What hatred? Right. What oh. is this hatred? Is it is it with reason? Is it irrational? Does it matter? Okay. Um, and also, I would say, um, I include in the same question. How does the hatred? I mean, actually, this could either be included in seven or it could be included in five. How does the hatred express itself? Meaning. Is it just that because you, you hate this person, then you're going to pick a fight with him? Or is the hate expressing itself in some sort of action or speech? And then that's going to ignite the quarrel. And similarly, also, who is the hater and who is the hated? I mean, this is all part of the question of like, what's the hatred scenario? That, that's the broad question. What is the hatred scenario here? Is it necessary to define quarrel at all? Uh, yes, that is another good question. What is a quarrel? Uh, oh, no, no, we said that already, didn't we? Oh, we yeah, did. What are these quarrels? I'll just add in what is the definition. Yeah, like, you know, the level of the quarrel. Yeah. Maybe escalated. Is it, oh, well, maybe escalation isn't part of this. Okay. What is the, the definition or degree of the quarreling? Of quarrel? Okay, good. All right. So then let's move on to the last part is Al Kopshayim Takase Ava. Love covers all uh, offenses. So. I, I feel like we should come up with a similar set of questions for here, right? So what is the nature of this love? Okay. Um, is it with reason? <laughs> is it irrational? Does it matter? Um, how does the love express itself? I'm just being lazy. Okay. Um, who is the lover and who is the lovey? That should be a word, lovey. Um, who is the lover and who is the loved? The beloved, that's, it is a word, <laughs> the beloved, okay. Um, and uh, what is the love scenario here? Okay, yeah. Okay. So yeah. does it actually matter if we don't have an exact translation for what the love is actually covering? Uh, you mean the Pesha thing? Yeah. Um, I feel like we have to know what that is. Uh, I mean, we have, to, we have to know what it is in order to explain the Pesha. It's gonna be hard to do it without that. Meaning like in all the translations that we have, do you think that like we have to pick one of them? It's not like we have to pick one of them, but we have to have some, like, look, all right, sins, sins I can delete uh, because sins and offenses, sins is kind of included in offenses. But whether you say it is generic term for offenses or rebellions or negligences, that's like very different, you know? Yeah, I think, I mean, we'll see. Okay, we already did kind of ask the questions on the love, but how is it being covered here? And is it good or bad? I, I feel so, like- So sim similarly yeah. to the, what I was asking on sins, just to reiterate it on yeah. the love path, is when it's being concealed, those sins or rebellions or whatever it is that's being concealed, yeah. is it in relationship to the person who's beloved? Or is it a general statement that a person who's a loving person, let's say, their sins are more likely overlooked? Or is it in a specific scenario where a person who's loved? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, okay. I mean, parts of that question are already covered in two, like who is it being covered from? But 
you're also asking a general question that could apply to the whole Pasuk. Is this Pasuk even, is this Pasuk talking in general or uh, like about general trends, general trends in human behavior, I guess, or is it talking about a specific scenario? Well, actually, both both of my options were kind of looking at it as general trends in, okay. in human behavior. Um, what I meant by yeah. yeah, so what I meant by general or specific is, in general, let's say. Um, hold on, let me let me think how to phrase this. Sure. Um, so, if a person loves someone, is this so talking about the, how that person will view my sins, meaning? this is a specific scenario. We're talking about general specific scenarios. So like in the, okay, maybe I need to reiterate again. So is this talking about specific people? Yeah. Meaning every time you have a, a, a person loving and a person who's loved, a certain patter, pattern will, will emerge. Okay. Or is it talking about a the way everyone will view a person who has this behavior? So like if you see a really friendly guy who loves everyone, is mm -hmm. everyone going to treat him a certain way just because he's a kind of person who loves easily? Or are we talking about a talking about just the dynamic of him and one other person that okay. he loves? Okay. All right. So, so, okay. So let me try asking this here in the love half. <laughs> um, is the Pusuk talking about a, a, I guess, a uh, two-party relationship dynamic, or is it talking about how the a uh, a beloved person will be treated by all? Something like that? <laughs> is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know yeah, if that's the clearest way to ask. It's pretty close. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Herb Shane. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because on the second half of the Pusuk, uh, wasn't there a Navi who, like, you know, uh, rehashed all the uh, the Chatam of Bnei Israel did? Um, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, by, uh, what? Uh, I mean, Navim do that a lot. What's the? Yeah, uh... I know, but like, it's interesting how like um, they don't just you know focus on the hate that they're doing currently. They bring back all yeah. of the time. So, you know, practices. if you if you want that approach, look at Rashi, okay? <laughs> Rashi <laughs> learns that this is about God and his relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, uh, sorry, and, and God, uh, God's relationship with, with Kali Yisrael uh, and, and their sins and bringing them up. Yeah, that's that's not the way we learn Mishle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know. It's just like, it's just interesting because on the surface, it seems like the second half of the Pasuk is supposed to be, or it should be a good thing, you know, that's something yeah. we should follow, but like really, wait a minute, but the Navi does this. So like, I don't know, I'm just observing. <laughs> I'm not saying anything more than that. Yeah. <laughs> you're trying to arouse my quarrels with Rashi. I, I see what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's uh, I, let's go back to, can I, I can't fit this all on one page, can I? We're gonna have to eliminate questions. Um, yeah, all right, fine. Uh, so, um, Let's work on the puzzle now. Uh, and let's do our new policy of thinking time and think for about, uh, let's, let's give it a, a minute. Okay, I, I will, uh, I, I'm, okay, I'm not gonna pause this. I know <laughs> if I pause it, I'm gonna forget. So we're just gonna, we're gonna think. Okay, and the people who are listening to the podcast or YouTube video can think also. They shouldn't miss out.
Okay, who's got an approach they want to share? I um, have a very, very low key idea. Like it's okay. not fully formed, but I was just thinking, I think that it's really interesting that it's using the two opposite extremes. And I'm reading this as like, that it's not a good and bad. I feel like they're both negative outcomes. Cause I feel like in both of them, we discuss the outcomes and I don't think either one is something I would personally want. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I'm thinking is that I feel like this Pusuk is showing that like, I mean, it's also, I feel like I'm biased because I'm just thinking about how Rambam says, like, you really do need to strike like the perfect balance between the two sides. Right. And I feel like, I'm just thinking that that's what this Pusuk is really talking about because it's showing the opposite extremes and how both of them have negative effects. Okay, good. So, okay, let's, let's just uh, uh, flesh that one out a little bit, right? Is that, that, um, that hatred and love both have liabilities. So obviously the hatred one's easier to understand. That's going to lead to quarreling and quarreling is not good. Uh, that's the premise here, right? And I don't think I need to prove that. And then the love concealing all offenses, if we're talking about blind spots, then that is bad. If we're talking about like, you know, someone, uh, like dessert, let's say like with the David example, like uh, deserves a disciplinary action, you know, where he, he should discipline his son and he didn't. And then that ended up like coming back to bite him. That's also bad, you know? So if you're in the grips of one of these two powerful emotions, then that's going to lead to bad consequences. And then therefore the implication is that you should do what? So now that's going to be the question according to your approach is that, uh, or that's gonna be the next step, which is like, like, what are you supposed to do or what does the middle look like other than just saying be rational you know like uh like we, we have to have a more uh, uh actionable idea than that so so that that's uh that's something to think about so anyone i guess let's do what we usually do let's see if anyone have an idea for how we can develop what rifki's saying um yeah, would you would you mind explaining her idea one more time yeah is that i'll, I'll explain the ramen the way that she references that ram says that every uh, emotion uh, or trait has two extremes uh, and they're both bad um, in the sense of if you can't control uh, either one or if you're if you're you have a high degree of one of them so in this case if you have uh, extreme hatred and I don't even I think Rifki would agree this is, could even be on a person-to-person -person basis right so like if you have extreme hatred that's going to lead to problems and if you have extreme love that's going to also lead to problems so the correct way is somewhere in the middle, but then the thing we need to find out is what does that middle look like? You know, like hate them on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and uh, you know love them on the other days. Like flip a coin on Chavez. Yeah. I mean, can you can I help her out a little bit? Yeah. I mean, can you maybe say that um, that really, you know. I don't know if you're gonna hate me for this, but I don't like it when the Pusik says I'll call Pashaim. I have a very difficult time with that. We'll delete it. Yeah, please do, please do. <laughs> maybe you could say that, maybe you could say that it's not referring to all Pashaim, it's just referring to how you're dealing oh. with. Yeah, no, sorry, right. go ahead. Did I say something bad? I don't know. No, no, I think you said something good. I have to check my notes. Yeah, <laughs> keep, keep talking. <laughs> maybe you could say that he's just referring to, it's how you handle them really. Again, I, th I think I think maybe the Pasham over here are, you know, let's say it's more of like, um, I don't know, let's keep it simple. You're in a marriage, okay. right? I don't yeah. know. Now you're, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're arguing with your spouse, okay? Now, um, you know, you know, the, the Pasham could be like, okay, things that she, uh, things that he or she, depending who you are, whatever, bothers you. <laughs> yeah. You know, what they're doing are bothering you. It's like, like you could either take you know, everything, you know, every little thing that they do. Yeah. And you could argue on everything that that, you know, individual does and you can attack them for it. Or yeah. you could just have a middle ground, just whatever is maybe, you know, like the, the big things that bothers you, you know, maybe that's something you should bring up because that's something that you actually, you know, it really bothers you. But like the little things, okay, fine. They leave the bathroom light and, you know, on and like, whatever. Okay, fine, yeah. whatever that, you know, like get over that, you know, but like did it, you have to have like a balance or something. Yeah. So the reason why I'm, 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 I'm smiling, I guess it wasn't on this Pusuk. Uh, Isaac, did we recently have a Pusuk that it said uh, coal and then one of the Mepharshim, I think it was Saigon, just changed it to like most. Yeah. Or yeah, we definitely had that. Yeah. Do you remember what it was? Um, I can probably find it quickly. 
Okay. If, if you do, then then I, I just want I don't I don't want uh I don't want Ariel to think that he's uh <laughs> he's pulling an illegitimate move here. Yeah. Um. And, and just to explain, but, but you know, regardless of whether we find it or not, um, it is within the realm of um uh of like proverbial style to make it into a universal one really it's not you know we said we saw this earlier in mish like, like we saw even cosby said that directly but like it's like if you say for example you know um two wrongs don't make a right you know well sometimes they do you know um but you state it as universal because proverbs don't have a very good rhetorical power when you just say well sometimes you know like you should do this you know it's uh so so you know love covers all faults is showing that like I don't know that the capacity of love to like uh, you know overlook faults is, is huge or something like yeah. that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think it was 1907. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me just. Uh, uh, I, I think it was Sadigon. Just to show you, it was definitely uh, Sadigon in whatever possible it was. Yeah. Um, so just to show you that I'm not making this up. Yeah. Okay. So Sadiqon says, yeah. So the, the Pasuk says, Kol ache rash uhu. All the brothers of the poor person hate him. And then Sadiqon translates it to, uh, Rabin. Wait, there it is. Rabin me ache harash soni moso many of the brothers of the poor person hate him <laughs> you know so we were like uh ah, that's a cheap move sad you go on but uh but then you know that's how it goes all right that's good i have sad on my side yeah so just to say, state your idea again is that you're saying that um it's like not the, really ba- the balance is you know um really determining what really bothers you and like what bothers you a little bit and not you know getting too upset yeah. about that yeah uh, th- that's on the hatred side Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's on the hatred side. Isn't it on both sides according to you? Meaning that same thing with the the like you you are gonna overlook certain offenses. You know. Um, right. Oh right. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I'm yeah. sorry. The truth. The truth is, um, I'm getting confused because I have kind of like two different ideas, uh, depending on how you define Peshayim. Uh, okay. This this way is more of uh, determining how you handle uh how you handle the no i'm sorry this oh, you want you want to uh, work, work okay, no, no, i'm sorry let's just stay on track yeah i'm sorry yeah you're right it's for both it's for both yeah okay it's for both yeah, yeah. so okay, i i still feel like like i still feel like there's something lacking in the the follow-through of the, of the practical idea like yeah okay i understand that that either emotion is bad and that you do need to be selective somehow but is the puzzle just saying like, like don't be so extreme, you know? Like, like I, I feel like like we need a more, like you know, practical idea. Are we are we only offering support or alternatives? Uh, right now, just support. We'll we'll do alternatives in a little while. I have two things to say. Yeah. So the first thing I was thinking, it's very possible this just popped into my head because we just did it last week. But I really feel like a good approach to this and also to make it more practical is what we did in Tehillim when we were talking about like Hashem and how you really need to strike that balance between logic and emotion. And that's literally like the whole idea of how to relate and connect to God. And I feel like, I don't know, I don't know if I'm like trying to shove it in here, but I do think that it fits here. And on top of that, I think another proof, quote unquote, for that to be fit in here is I think we do reflect a lot of things in life based off of our relationship with Hashem and vice versa. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm missing a step here. What does Hashem have to do with this? Not actually Hashem. I'm just saying the idea we spoke about last week in Tehillim Group when we were saying that you need to have a balance between like understanding that Hashem doesn't have emotions, but then also realizing that you do, you can't just have pure logic. You also have to have emotions in that relationship. And okay, so now tell me, tell me how that is, uh, how that applies here because i'm not i'm not seeing it so i'm saying i think that this possible might be trying to teach us that you need to have logic in relationships as well because it's talking so heavily about emotions mm-hmm. and i was 
thinking like like I said, we really base a lot of things in life off of our relationship with Hashem. And yeah. I think that it's a very true idea. And I think it could be fit here. Right. Yeah, I guess the thing that I, that I don't, I'm not happy about with that is like, I feel like, and may, maybe this is a, uh, this is a, a problem with, uh, with this approach in general, uh, or not problem, but like, like the thing that I, the reason why I'm, I'm not inclined towards it, like, look, what you said is true. <laughs> you know, what he says, uh, I'm not arguing with the truth of it, but I feel like, like if the, the positive idea is too specific, then it should, it should say something about it. I don't know. I mean, I, I got to think about it some more. Yeah. All right. Let, let's, um, let's put that on the back burner for now and see a different approach. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see where that takes us. Uh, yeah. Zach, you wanted to have a different approach or Ariel? I, I forgot who was, uh, um, I'll go for it. Zach could go. Yeah. Zach could go first. Okay. Sure. Um, so I, um, I guess I tend to not be super satisfied with like the, the, first level of interpretation, not that it's wrong, but that I um, am interested in something like almost like I didn't know. And yeah. saying that hatred causes a fight and loves helps kind of avoid them is fairly generic, even if yeah. it's true. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to think like, what's, what's the like lesser known reality that he's sharing? And right. I think that this is talking about a person's relationship with all of humanity, as I might have um, hinted towards in my questions earlier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and so I think essentially um, the way a person re relates to all of humanity um, can lead to different results. And if a person keeps hatred in their heart versus love in their heart, it'll lead them towards fights. And I think that, um, the part of the idea is that even if a person thinks that in their head they'll like be pissed at everybody and like ha have a narrative where they're like you know cursing people out in their mind but like face to face they're always going to be polite mm -hmm. and someone might think that they can get by with that you know like i'll just be polite and that'll be okay um but he's saying like no ultimately it'll arouse the quarrel quarrels that are there and that's why i actually like when you pointed out that it's not just starting but igniting because i think all of all human beings are going to be annoyed at stuff you know that's yeah. just the nature you know we have different thoughts feelings and opinions and so we're naturally going to find tension with other people and if you focus in your mind on the hatred um quarrels will find you and I think it, I think it kind of relates both on how you view people, meaning you'll be more likely to pick fights with people, but I think it also is how people will view you, um, you know, because of that mindset that you're projecting, um, I think you'll become a, an easier person to pick a fight with versus a person who has love if they're looking for the things they love and looking to express love towards, you know, fellow man, the, it, again, it works both ways. Internally, the things that annoy them, they'll be able to gloss over easier and like be able to like override it and not be as caught up on it. But also the way people interact with them will be more focused on love and avoiding the, you know, flaws of the person rather than fighting, picking fights with them. Okay, good. I actually like that idea, and it, it reminds me of the it reminds me of the idea that you came up with a couple psukim ago, but it fits better here. <laughs> I think about the uh, that the um, the reflecting back of the attitude. What was what was it? The um, I forgot which pasuk it was. Uh, I'll get it in a second. I could just look. I think it was the eyes pasuk. The which puzzle? Like the one about the eyes. The eyes. That sounds yes, it was about the eyes. Um what did it say about the eyes? Uh hold on. Ten. It was it was holy patron. It was the holy yes. patron. One who walked with integrity will be um will walk securely. Uh and uh and one who perverts his ways, something, something. Uh where is it? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong safer. I'm looking at the Um and one who uh, perverts his ways will be will be exposed. Yeah, 
Yeah, there, uh, there you were saying that if you treat every human interaction with the assumption that they're going to deal with integrity, then that will lead to more actual cooperation and good uh, benefits. Whereas the, the other way, um, wait, no, no, that's not the one with the eyes. Sorry. Well, I, I mean, it I think was. No, it well, wasn't the eye. I got mixed up. Yeah. yeah the, I, I remember trying to use the idea of like why a city is responsible for um, like a, the murder of a stranger in their town. Yeah. Because if they didn't welcome them, then the person invites strife by being nervous. And right. so when we are, you know, suspicious of people, we're inviting suspicious behavior. So, uh -huh. right. Yeah, I think this works out well here, especially because it is speaking in such generic terms. Um, and yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any uh, problems with the puzzle with that idea. I think that's a good idea. Okay, anyone else have another approach? I have two. Um, but yeah. Oh, was someone saying something? Uh, uh yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, so I was thinking that um, when it says uh, that uh. Sina um, Torer um, Medanim, it's not referring to it like igniting it originally. It's more like reignites it, but. Sorry, I'm putting this wrong. Um, hatred arouses quarrels, but love smothers sins. Oh, wow. <laughs> that has a poetic ring to it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> So I kind of am just imagining this um, idea of um, when you hate someone, you, um, you end up uh, pulling off this violence. Like Zach said, um, it just uh, sort of comes up into you whether you really want to show it or not. Mm -hmm. And conversely, with love, it sort of just uh, pushes it down no matter what you're actually feeling at that time. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to go and push down you from doing sins in the future. Oh, that's interesting. So it's going to, okay, so that, that's a, that is a completely different reading, right? So it prevents you from doing sins. That's interesting. <laughs> that is I, interesting. I was thinking the highest point of um, serving Hashem is Ava Hashem. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, th I feel like, yeah, that's interesting. So it's stifles or uh, smothers. I think stifles is probably better one than smothers, right? Smothers is like, you're going to kill, but like Stifles is like, you know, but uh, that's an interesting read. It's kind of like when you put a blanket over a fire to put it yeah. out. So if you have Avas Hashem, then every time you're about to do a Pesha, it, it quells the rebellion inside of you. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you could apply this not only to Hashem, but I, I do think that this it is almost like what Zach was saying, even though it's a different reading of the Pasuk, is that if you make your default mode of conduct towards people as, um, as one based on love, it really will like, like the natural human emotions that you have of like being petty or being like, uh, like, like a uh, harsh or unkind or whatever will be uh, kept in. And like, it might be, be, still be something you have to work on, but like, it's not going to express itself in action. You know, like I'm reminded by um, two good movies um, I recommend. Uh, one is, and I, it, I recommend it in this order, the Mr. Rogers documentary, and then uh, the movie with Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers. Um, I forgot which one's called which. One of them is called It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood and the other one's When You Be My Neighbor. I forgot which one's, uh, or something like that, you know? But like Mr. Rogers seems to have been a person who was genuinely like pr trying to practice this like compassion and empathy to all people. And uh, and like in one of the things like he, uh, I forgot if it was him or if it was his wife said that like, yeah, he has bad days and he's grumpy like everyone else. But because he he has basically made the the actions of love you know, uh, and the speech of love into his mode of, of, of operation. So then it, it keeps all those other things in a realm where he deals with them privately, but it's not, um, uh, it's not being expressed towards other people. I guess the question there would be, is that going to fall into the thing that Zach was saying for the first half? Is it going to bubble out somewhere? You know, it's an interesting thing. I could see, I could see uh, both sides. 
Very did interesting you, reading uh, the puzzle, though. Did you um uh, remember the end of uh, the documentary about uh, Mr. Rogers? Uh, refresh my memory. Um, they were protesting against Mr. Rogers. Why? Oh yes, because they think that because he was inclusive of different lifestyles, homosexuals and gays and this and that, right? Right. He was very inclusive. Right. He never found fault with him. So they they protest against him because he was breaking down the moral fiber of society. Right. Yeah. But he didn't hate those the protesters. <laughs> right. He yeah. didn't hate the protesters, but the protesters ha hated what he was projecting right. on his program. Yeah, it's interesting. What Les is saying kind of reminds me of how it's um I I don't know where, but like they talk about Aaron Hakoin. Yeah. How around him people sinned less than you know, perhaps around Moshe. Right. Because of the yeah. love that he showed everybody. Yeah, is they, they they said that you know he was he, he pursued peace and uh and like he would uh people would say like like Aaron thinks that I'm this like great guy because he's always like like you know treating me as such and like like you know with these expectations like how could I possibly like like do wrong and like like disprove him yeah yeah that's a good thing yeah that, that's a good idea or a good good a good association to that um Ariel do you did you want to say your idea yeah um and it, I have two different ways of uh defining Pashan. Uh, yeah let's stick with the uh with the uh Pisham means actual sense, like uh, chatan. Okay. Chatan that you, you know, that you just uh, ownish. Um, so if you say that, uh, then the kulp, then the second half of the pasach, the al kol pisham to is uh, it's a little problematic. You know because uh, because. You know, if you're blind, if you blindly fall in love with someone, you you're just uh, infatuated with this individual. You're just you're just gonna be blinded through your love, and you're just never gonna see through them. And uh, and you know, she may be a murderer, and you're like, okay with it. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. do what you got to, you know. But but whatever it is. Um, so so over there, you know. You know, let's go to the first half. Senator Madonna. That just means that you're using the chatam as as a reason to attack the individual. You're you're not necessarily going to, you know, give him proper the proper way of musr, whatever that means. You know, whatever that means to give proper musr, you're going to use that as an excuse. And it could be something very small. It could be something like, you know, the smallest chet they possibly did, but you're using that as, as, as a means to, to attack him, mm -hmm. not because of the chet itself, but because of who he is. Okay, good. You hate him as a person. Yeah. And, and you're, you, that's an excuse. Um, you're, you're, it's funny, you should, should be uh, hard on the problem, but soft on the person, right? <laughs> I read, I read that in a book somewhere, The Art of Negotiating the Best Deal. And, and, and you know, he's definitely hard on the person in the first case because of, wow. he just hates him. Mm -hmm. But the second half is, uh, is really saying that, you know, yeah, obviously if they're a murderer, I have to send them to base then. You know, it's, it's, right. you know, I think there's a Rashi somewhere on the parasha that says if you, if you, if you hide your, one of your family members or, or anyone, you know, uh, from, from, you know, from, uh, from an ownish, you know, you're, you're, you're hive also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think specifically talking about your family member because you're emotionally attached to them. Mm -hmm. Either way, you know, there are some time that maybe you can, you know, uh, I'm oh, sorry, there, there are ways on how to handle, you know, the, the fate, uh, you know, maybe you could, educate him, look, you know, you really shouldn't be doing this, you know, you know, it'll put him on the right track and doing muster. I'm sorry, doing, doing chuva or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the idea of the Pusik is really how to handle, you know, the, uh, the individual. I have the first part clear. I don't know what you're saying for the second part. 
which the whole uh, the second half of the puzzle uh, and the chuva and the and the I I, I, just, I got lost. Were you uh, saying that you shouldn't let love interfere with the problems that arise that need to be addressed? That would be good. <laughs> is that uh, Zach? Can you say that one more time, please? Uh, I, I was just wondering if this is what you were saying. Were you saying that you should that you shouldn't let love interfere with addressing real problems that need to be addressed? I shouldn't let love interfere. And like if there's an issue, whether it's an offense, a sin, or negligence, or whatever it is that needs to be addressed, um, allowing love to cover it can be a problem. And so, not allowing love to cover it and addressing the issue head on would be the right thing to do. Is Let's go with that one. <laughs> I, I don't know, <laughs> but but I'm open minded here. Let's. Uh... All right. So now, I mean, I like that for the second half, and now I'm just not. I, I'm having a hard time seeing the unity in the uh, in the puzzle as a whole. That you're saying for the first part, it was that you were reacting too much based on the person, and not based on the thing. Yes. So isn't so then? I guess that really is the same problem for both halves then. Right, that you're in both halves, you're relating to the person based on your relationship with them and who they are rather than what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. So that idea, it's funny, it didn't sound like that to me when you first said it. That's the idea that most of the Mafarshim say. Okay. And let, let's go, let's use that as a segue into this. And we, I, I, I chose several of them because they say it in different ways. Let's explore that idea. So we get that idea. And then if it ends up being different than what you're saying, then, then let me know and we could use it to like clarify your idea. So here's what the Mafarshim say. Uh, and you know what? Let me just go back to my other, uh, hold on, uh, other orientation on the page. Right. Where did this go? Well, I don't know if this would be um, relevant now, but do you want me to tell you, I, I don't know if it's related, but do you want me to tell you the different definition of Bisham? Uh Not right now. Let's, okay. let's do one, one at a time. Okay. Um, okay, so Matsudas David. So this is really where I got it from when I was preparing this. Um, so he says like this, Sina, Hasina Shiesh La Adam Ami Hima Oreris Medanim. So hatred that, that you uh, you have for somebody will arouse quarrels. Lasos Mariva to um, to make a fight. Ula Hakbid Al Davar Kal and to be Makbid to be like particular or like like strict or uh, like um, nitpicky about something that's insignificant, okay? About avas adam lachavero, but love of one person for his fellow, tachase al koldavar, al koldavar, pasha, that will conceal or cover up any matter of offense. Aval yakpid af al davar kasha. Um, oh, sorry, hold on. Did I misread this the first time? Aval yakpid af al davar kasha. Okay, ignore that. He might not be saying what I'm saying, uh, the way we were saying it, but let's just so, do. Aaron, what's the problem? He, I mean, even, I mean, on the on the person who he loves, on his friend, he's going to be mocked on the important things. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, that's a different idea. That is a different idea than, than what I thought he was saying. So let me just go to the ones that were, that were what I thought. Okay, Rav, uh, Yosef, uh, this is a Rav Yosef Kimchi. Okay, so hatred between people will arouse quarrels at all times. So even on something that's light or insignificant, he's going to start up a fight. If there is love between them, then even an offense, which is on purpose, you will treat as being unintentional, and you'll forgive him. Okay. Similarly, I'll, I'll summarize afterwards. But similarly, the Meiri says, um, rivos. "Hatred will arouse quarrels and strife." Uh, Even on light matters that people are not accustomed to get angry about or to fight about, because due to the abundance of one person's hatred for the other, he will be suspicious of him or he'll suspect him even of a light matter. The af al hashgagos, even on unintentional things, he's coded imotamid, and he'll always be fighting with him. Okay, the haava behefek, but love is the opposite. Shetachase af al hapeshaim, he will conceal even uh, intentional sins. Sheimas donos vahamaradim or merdim, I don't know how to say it. Even intentional sins and rebellions. 
Vuhu Lehear Lehisrachik Minasinos. Uh, this is uh, a lesson that you should distance yourself from hatreds. Which will cause a person to incite strife uh, for no reason. To the point where you're going to get a lot of severe harms and evil and, uh, and consequences. And you should also distance yourself from uh, doing business with them. Now, let me split this into two parts to explain the idea, okay? Because I think the idea is what Michael Bruce and I came up with, but the application I have is different, okay? So the idea is like this, is when you have someone who you hate and they do something and you get upset and you fight with them, you think it's because of the thing they did. But if that same thing were done by one of your friends, you would not react that way. So it's clearly not the thing it's your relationship with a person that is dictating how you react to the, to, to the offense, you know? So, um, so what the Meiri is saying is he's making the puzzle, the practical application all about hatred saying you should therefore uh, distance yourself from people who you hate or who hate you because it's just going to lead to quarrels. Um, because you're going to end up fighting over things that aren't really worth fighting about. But what, what I wanted to say is that this shows you basically how to deal with the, to, with the, uh, the, um, the anger that comes from, uh, from the things that upset you from these people. In other words, if someone does something that upsets you really badly, then what this puzzle is telling you is stop and ask yourself, if my best friend did this, would I be as angry? And if the answer is no, then it means that it's not the thing itself that is angering you. It's your interpretation of the thing itself is being influenced by your relationship to that person and your pre-existing views about that person, you know? And you should think into that and analyze whether the thing itself, like that should be the thing to stop you and pull you out of your like self-righteous anger where you automatically assume that it's uh, that this is a thing that's worthy to get upset about and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. If my friend were doing this, I wouldn't be as upset. Now, why is that? And you think, oh, because I know that my friend doesn't have my, uh, you know, is, is not out to get me. You know, he has my best interest at heart. Well, is this person out to get you, you know? Or like, are, what, what are the assumptions that you're making and the perspectives that you're bringing to the table that's causing you to react to this in a different way than it would if it came from someone else? So, Lamashal, um, if I had like um, three decks of magic cards set up on a table, Yes. And uh, this guy like walks over and knocks them all over. Yeah. Um, I'd probably be pretty angry at him, especially if I thought that he was doing it on purpose. Right. But right. if my friend did it, um, I'd probably be more inclined to think it was an accident, even if maybe I just milled him three times in a row. Okay, right. But, um, right. So, so, so in that case, right. So then, then you would stop and ask, well, if my friend did it, then uh, I, I would view it differently. Now, why is that? Well, my friend knows what he's doing. Does this guy know what he's doing? <laughs> like, does this guy know that 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 this is as valuable as it is? Does he know like how much that it's going to hurt me, you know, by doing this? Does he know like, like you know, you ask all these questions, it would start this dialogue that gets you to really think about whether or not this is really um, worth um, like getting upset about. And the opposite is also true, and that that's the crazy thing as well, which is that if if someone does something to you that a little voice tells you like, this is bad or this is a harmful thing. And you have that type of personality where you like, you know, look it over and like are willing to forgive. So many times that'll be a good thing. Like again, being forgiving is, is generally a good quality, but there is such a thing of people taking advantage of, uh, of, your, of your willingness to overlook stuff. And like, you have to like try to look at the thing objectively and, and like, you know, um, uh, uh, treating it as though a stranger or an enemy did it um, would would be uh, a good way to do that. Like, I, I'll use this example, okay? This is not exactly the cleanest example, but, you know, as a high school teacher, there have been times when students have done things that the behavior is unacceptable, but obviously their parents are going to have a blind eye when it comes to their behavior, you know? And like, you, the, the trick is to like how to talk to the parent in a way where they actually realize like, do you realize like what your kid did, you know? And you can't help but like want to just say, if any other kid did this to your kid, 
then you would fly off the handle. But because it was your kid who did it to the other kid, then, oh, well, my, my daughter has, has like, is sensitive and like has these, you know, like it's this double standard, you know? And like, you have to extract the relationship from the action, you know? And this puzzle is giving you a tool for doing that is you imagine that this thing was, that, that, that upset you so much was done by someone who, who you love or who loves you and then ask yourself, okay, what is due to my relationship to the person and what is due to my actual reaction to the thing they did, you know? That's, that's the idea that, that we came up with. I, I actually really like it and the framework it puts uh, your mind in. Mm -hmm. um, I guess just to flush it out, I wanna understand um, exactly what you're suggesting or the parameters of the sure. suggestion. So I'm just gonna go back to the first half um, yeah. of this um, phrase. Yeah. And so in a case where a person does something that ignites the urge to pick a fight or makes you upset or whatever it is, and you then have this moment where you think, well, would I be upset at one of my friends if they did this? Yeah. If your answer is no, and the reason is, and then you're like, well, why? And the reason is because my friend has a tremendous amount of goodwill that I'm willing to extend toward them. And this right. person may not have, they may have, you know, be, they may be a repeat offender or whatever. Meaning if we're not talking about specifically just assuming intentions, right. Um, Cause you know, I do think assuming intentions is, uh, is a whole, you know, we've talked about that already yeah. today, but if we're not talking about assuming intentions, is there still room for this idea to take place where it's like, okay, well, the, my, I guess I'll let you just jump in if you have a thought. Oh, and I mean, ju just to respond to the, the, uh, the intentions thing and also to the way that Meiri said it about intentional and, and, uh, and, um, and unintentional, you know, like, I'll give you an example. Like, uh, and I, I've, I've talked about this on the, the, the Stoju podcast before, but my, um, like m m one of my wake up moments in my first year of teaching when I was teaching uh, this group, the, you know, the worst behaved uh, group of 10th grade boys in the school. Um, and like, they were, they were like, you know, uh, they were animals, you know, uh, and, and I was a new teacher and like, I would get upset and like, I couldn't control the class. Um, and I realized that uh, I had this moment of realization um, that like, well, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll talk through the same moment of realization I talked to on the podcast, even though not all of it is relevant, is like there was this one day of like absolute chaos. And uh, like, I, I, one of the kids was literally like jumping onto the like air conditioner and shredding paper in it. Like, you know, it was, it was really, really bad, you know? And so I had this like aha moment, I call it the storm insight, which was, I, I suddenly pictured myself in uh, out, outdoors and it was like a hurricane, you know? And like the, the wind and rain were like whipping like the, 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 the palm trees. For some reason there were palm trees in the thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, uh, maybe it was, I was thinking Florida or something, I don't know. The, the palm trees and like, there's this, the, you know, the lightning and the thunder. And then this thought, this question came to my mind of, can I control the storm? Obviously I can't, you know, cause the storm has its own nature and its own dynamic thing. And if I expect to be able to control the storm then I'm the idiot, you know? So then I snapped back and realized these are 10th grade boys. They are animals, right? And that's what made me realize, first of all, they can't change their nature, you know? So me expecting them to change their nature is no different than me expecting a storm to stop storming, you know? And if I do expect that, then, um, then, uh, then I'm like, then I, I'm the idiot. And secondly, and this is the part that, so that part's not so relevant, but this is the part that is relevant. They're not doing it to me. You know, in other words, overtly, I was treating myself as a victim and that they're trying to like, they're, they're, they're doing this to spite me. No, they're not. They just, they would do this with any person in my position. They're not doing it to me. I, they're not doing it to me any more than like the, the, the tree and the storm that falls down on the house was doing it to the house. No, it's just like, that's what storms do. And that's where the tree fell, you know? So so Zach, in your question, like, like if you ask yourself, um, you know, uh, would I be upset if this were uh, as upset if this were for my friend? The answer is no. Well, why not? Because my friend has goodwill towards me. So then continue that line of reasoning. Well, is this person doing it from ill will to me? Most of the time, the answer is going to be no. Okay. Most of the time, the answer is going to be 
like like they they were just like let's say like this happens uh, you know i guess uh, you know in in various lines of, of work you know whether like you're a waiter or like a cashier or whatever the customer yells at you you know they were just angry and you happen to be the one working the desk or whatever or like like this parent is angry and like i happen to be the the, the person who who revealed to them that that their kid is going to fail if they don't like get the grades up you know like they're not doing it to me like yes in fact in fact i am the tar i am like the recipient but it's not at me it's at the thing that i represent to them you know and like and 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 that does mitigate it and it makes the like again it's like the Miri said it makes the intentional things into unintentional uh where where it, it, it's it, it's not the malicious thing that you 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 bring it up to me and in the cases where it is malicious is this is the uh, interesting thing let's just see if this works out in the cases where it is malicious okay so then most of the time, it still is not you. It's them operating based on their own internal psychodynamic, like uh, you know, issues. You know, it's not really at you. And again, that doesn't make it any less harmful, but it does make it less painful in terms of the ego pain of being the victim. You know, that they're not doing to me. They're just acting out their 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 uh, their you know their daddy issues or their like mommy issues. You know, uh, like uh, and I'm the, I'm the recipient. You know, they might kick the puppy if uh, if I wasn't here. You know. Um, or they're doing it to me because I actually deserve it. In which case, I shouldn't be angry at them. I should actually be like, think, well, what did I actually do that's so bad, you know? Or, and this is the juiciest one, <laughs> or they hate me for something that I am doing right, okay? Like the Mr. Rogers example, right? I mean, the, the other example in the documentary of him being, you know, that Leslie was mentioning, of him being inclusive, you know, that was his thing is that, that I mean, his, again, he was a Christian, that God loves everybody. And like, and, and he wasn't saying it in some like redemptive way. Like he didn't try to convert people. He didn't breathe the word of Christianity on his show, just showing unconditional love for everybody, you know? And you know what, what else people hated him for, for, for the scene where he, he bathed his feet in an inflatable pool with the black uh, uh, mailman. And people said, you're destroying the moral fabric of our society. No white man should have his feet in a bath with a, with a, uh, with, with a black man. And, and they, they raged against him for that. But I'm sure he knew that he was doing the right thing and they're hating him for his virtues and, and they're hating him because of their issues, <laughs> you know? So like, as a side I, note, yeah, as a side note, I think Vasilis Yasharam says that's the worst kind of hate. Uh, hating because on for the virtues, yes, I, yeah, I, I think so because it really stems from a real corrupt uh, corruption in, in in the hater, you know. So, so Zach, I don't know if I cover all the cases, but like that's what I mean by like like start using this idea to start a dialogue where you you are examining this thing in you're asking questions of of this thing that you wouldn't have asked if you were in the grips of your hatred, you know. Um, and all these questions do have this effect of like, first of all, removing yourself from the situation, setting it aside, you know, um, asking yourself, what is my ego? What is the thing? Asking myself, well, what stems from that person? What stems from my own issues? And I think by the time you go through all this process, and I'm not saying that it's easy to do in the moment, but by the time you go through all this process or when you're dissecting it, when you're doing a post postmortem, like let's say you do get into a fight with a person and then now you're just like sulking at home and now you can go back and think about this, you know, then going through these things can mitigate the uh, the hatred and the anger and then lessen it for next time. So I don't know if that answers your question or-, or like and That answers a tremendous amount of it. And I think that that's a fantastic um, idea and well articulated. And I particularly like that 10th grade, 10th grade boys uh, yeah. example. Yeah, yeah that was a life- Does that, that remind us from high school? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are being recorded. Don't know, you know, maybe your teachers are gonna see this. Yeah, all right, good. All right, so we're we're almost I guess we're almost at our ending time. So just to restate the uh, the idea one more time here is that um, that uh, the puzzle is pointing out a fact that hatred arouses quarrels and all and, and love covers all offenses, which means that the same thing that could lead to a quarrel with one person would totally be covered by your love from another person. And that points to the fact that often what causes you to uh, to either overlook or to fight is not based on the thing, it's based on your relationship to the person. And by examining that relationship, then you can get more insight into whether this thing really is worthy about being uh, upset over and how much of this is stemming from you 
your issues or the person's issues or your relationship with them and not really from the thing itself. And, and like just making yourself out of that superficial way of looking. Yeah, Zach. Sorry. Um, is the way you're phrasing it though, it really addresses the quarrels more than it addresses the hatred. And it seems like really the hatred is the key issue. Meaning yes. you might be able to like unravel each quarrel individually, but how do you unravel the hatred with this? Line yeah. So I thinking? don't, that's a, that's a good question. So <laughs> it's, it's funny. Um, I, so this part's not funny, but the uh, uh, I don't think the puzzle is addressing how to get rid of the hatred. I think there are other other ways, uh, other psukim about how to actually get rid of the hatred. In fact, uh, this morning, I mean, this morning's pasuk was really about dealing with anger, but I, I, I suspect that there's a, a, a close relationship with them. So that's something, but there's th this puzzle is not dealing with how to get rid of the hatred. And it's interesting because that's why the Meiri, like the Meiri, what's his advice? Avoid the person. <laughs> you know, and that is good advice. It's not going to undo the hatred in your heart, but it will avoid like causing this to flare up. Uh, but I think that's the essential answer is that this puzzle is focusing on the quarrels and the the uh, offenses, not the hatred and the love, because it, it's the hatred and the love are, is like part of the circumstances in which the puzzle applies. It's just part of the facts of the case, you know, like it's there. And 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 what the Shlomo is trying to stop you from doing is getting into a fight over it. Um, and, uh, and so he's, he's telling you how to deal with the actual, like fighting, like with the, with the symptom, not the cause, not, not the ultimate cause. I mean, the, the proximate cause of like, like you're, you're getting angry because you hate this person, but he's not dealing with like the, the ultimate cause here. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Fair. And that's an important sure. methodology point also. Like, I feel like we might've made this before, but, uh, it's worth repeating, which is, you know, every puzzle has a subject and, if you define the subject too narrowly, you miss the idea. And if you define the subject too broadly, then you, you end up expecting more out of the Pasuk than, than Shlomo is actually trying to teach you. And so it's this, this like um, cropping game, like cropping the image of, uh, of like, how, how narrow do I make it? And, and what is part of what the Pasuk is trying to change? And what is, what is, uh, uh, what, is, what is something that the puzzle is not dealing with here, you know? So here the puzzle is not dealing with how to get rid of the hatred. It's dealing with getting rid of the quarrels that stem from the hatred. Okay, let's officially end here. And, uh, and I'll, again, I'll take questions if there are any. Um, and um, and uh, uh, no shear for the next two Mondays. Um, so uh, I guess see Wait, you then. First news? Yes. Um, I just wanted to... Uh... Add, it actually applies within a relationship with the same person, right? In very close right. relationships, we go through- That's also true, that's a good point. Times. And the very things that we're hating, if we're honest, could be things that at other times we love or adore or, yeah. or cherish or accept or certainly don't have a problem with. Yes. It motivates it and it, str it strongly influences it. And then just the two psukim, right? Lo sit and which are obviously been echoed. And yeah. you know, seem to yeah. define the that's a, that's a good point. There's another puzzle that we did of um, uh, in my morning mission last year of the um, uh, Isaac. What's the brothers' uh, love palace bolt thing? Ach nifshe me curious os. Yeah, a wrong brother is is uh, is stronger than a fortified city. And you remember uh, the... And the quarrels are like a palace bolt. So I don't remember how we got it from the puzzle, even if we finished. But I remember an idea we got from there is that love and hate both stem from identification, in many ways. Uh, now I don't know about all forms of hatred, but but uh, but certainly hatred in relationships, and that's why like the the hatred between like siblings and spouses can be among the strongest hate, hate, hatred ever because the identification is the strongest thing ever. And, and you know, it, it, it's, it's a parallel thing. And so I think what Donnie's saying is really important is like when you find yourself getting into a fight and, and feeling the hatred towards someone who you do love, remembering that this is just the flip side of the coin of the love can help you to put the hatred into better perspective. That it all stems from the identification. Um, uh, also, I have a quick question. Sure. So, just for like clarification, that's my dad sawing. I don't know if. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope you can hear me right now. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, so I was just wondering, in terms of, I know Zach asked like about the how do you deal with the hatred, and I know like it's not specifically this pasuk. Yeah. So just to clarify, are we saying that like 
the sorry I now it's like, okay. yeah. um so are we saying that the the only benefit let's say like we're taking the example that you were saying like all the different things that it could be let's say if it actually is malicious so yeah. are we saying that the what this puzzle is trying to teach us is like really um lowering the levels of psychological pain and suffering or is there any other consequence that we're learning for that specific like if it actually is malicious yeah, I mean, I, I think it is focusing on, I mean, the puzzle itself is focusing on stopping the quarrels and then by extension, fo uh, stopping all of the emotions that give rise to or come from the quarrels. Um, I think if it really is malicious, then you would have to take practical measures like if there's a real concern that they might harm you or if, uh, if like they're going to damage their reputation and that's going to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, practical effects. Um, and, uh, and so like, like there are other things that you might need to do, but this is just going to stop the quarreling and the, those emotions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ariel? According to, uh, uh, to your way of learning, um, is there like a, a, a practical difference in defining the Pesham as actual Khatam or, or, and versus, uh, uh, no, in fact, I think that might, it might be appropriate that it's using the word Pesham. Oh, this is actually good. I don't know if this is being drushy or not, okay. that Pesham can mean intentional rebellious malicious sins or it can mean negligence <laughs> and that's really like in other words like you relate to this without the puzzle as a pesha that this guy did to you as a pesha of like rebellious intentional sin but like maybe it's just a negligent thing and if this came from someone who uh, who loved you or who you love then you just you would say oh it was just it was they were just being negligent you know so it uses an ambiguous term to encapsulate like the two perspectives that you should have that's, that's either a good drush or it's a good shot. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you can, you have to, can you say that one more time? I didn't really yeah. follow that. So the, the way that Miri said it is, is someone does something to you and if you, if this, if you have hatred with them, you will treat this as, a, as an intentional offense. They're maliciously doing this to me. That's treating it as a pesha, as a rebellious intentional offense. But the puzzle shows you that if you're, if someone who you love did this to you, you would just brush it off as unintentional and that's Pesha as negligence. So it's using a purposely ambiguous uh, term because it's showing you that what you think is Pesha rebellion really you should, you could be Pesha and negligence. Oh, I understand. Meaning meaning Pesha may or may not be like a, like a, like a very strong, like, like, like a, an intentional thing. Yeah, yeah. They could just be something like small, something minor. Yeah, they might not have even meant it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can tell you from, from life experience, I've had, I've had several instances where I thought that the person was maliciously doing something to me, and it turned out it was just like they were completely even unaware of what they were doing. Like it was just not like I wasn't even in their mind, like, you know, but I took it personally anyway, you know, and uh, you could, <laughs> I don't know if you've had cases like that, but like, it's, uh, it's very easy to do. Like we're very egotistical that way where we ascribe uh, a larger importance to ourselves and then assume that they're out to get us. Right, yeah. How, how does the identification result in hatred or, yeah. I think it's because you, uh, you see aspects of, of yourself in the other person that you don't like. And, and the, self, uh, the, the, the self hatred <laughs> is stronger than the hatred of everyone else, you know? Um, like uh, like the Amnon uh, and and uh, um, and Tamar, I think, is the example that says that he didn't. What uh, I can't remember the puzzle, but he hated her because she she reminded him of of the hate that he did, you know. Um, or let's say like in 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 certain uh, you know ab you know like um, abusive uh, uh, um, p parent child situations, like the parents you know, extreme hatred is because they see aspects of themselves reflected in their child that they don't like and they don't want to face. But instead of like dealing it with their own stuff, then they take it out on, on the child. So it, it has to, you see it reflected back at you. Um, sorry to do this, but um, I want, can you also maybe say that, this might be a different idea, but uh, can you also say that maybe, you know, there's another, you know, there's a meta of just letting something go and just ignoring. Yeah. yeah, so if you are interested in that, listen to today's morning Mishle Shir. Uh, that, that's what the entire thing is about. It's, uh, it's the, the today's Mishle Shir is extremely important. Uh, it's Seichel Adam Heri Rapo. Man's intelligence uh, uh, slow, makes him slow to anger. 
the tifarto over al pasha and his splendor is to overlook an offense and we really outline a uh uh a way to uh to to get rid of that uh, to like overlook it entirely very important That's interesting here. i was gonna apply it for this puzzle yeah bit. yeah i don't think this puzzle is telling you how to how to completely get over it. i think it's just telling you you will get over stuff if you love if you love the person i don't think it's telling you how to um right. I, I actually did have an approach that that um uh, uh, I mentioned I have two ideas. I didn't say the other one. The other approach I had before we did the the Matuas David or whatever is Sina to Orm Nidanim is hatred arouses quarrels. Okay, so if you find yourself about to get into um, a uh, if you find yourself interacting with a uh, person who, who there's hate between you, remember this could lead to a quarrel, and quarrels are going to make your life miserable. So that's step one: is is if I indulge the hatred. I will be involved in quarrels and that could be bad. It could make me more frustrated. It's going to make me more angry. It's going to create more practical problems. And then the second step is Ahava. Ahava is based on identification. And if you identify with this person and look for what you have in, excuse me, in common, or if you apply the standard of the have to the Kamocha and, and a uh, Hillel statement of what is hateful to you, don't do to your fellow. And you realize, well, would, how would I feel if this person didn't let something go for me? I would not like that, you know? So I should treat this person the way that I would want him to treat me. And I should let it go because of this ahava that exists that that really like we should, you know, we should exemplify the have to the Kamocha, not not treat ourselves as inherently superior. And then that could be a route, you know, where you you get out of the hatred. Uh, um, but I, I don't think that's as fruitful as the one I talked about this morning uh, that we, we did this morning. All right. Um... And just lastly, are we uh, taking the cult to shine literally? Um, for your approach? For my approach, cult to shine, um, I think it is possible that if the love is strong enough and you'd overlook uh, everything, you know, like uh, I, I think that there are, you know, there is, especially with, with parental love, that the parental love uh, I think can be un unconditional. Uh, obviously, it's not always unconditional, but like, you know, parental love can be like that. And they will say like, like, you know, no matter what, then I will always love you. Like that's, I think that is a real phenomenon. So, so as long as it is a real phenomenon, then it could apply to the Pasuk where you can say that like, you know, if a, it was a person who I had uncon unconditional love for, I would overlook it, you know? So, so is this like, second half? Yeah, with murderers and like their parents. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is the, 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 the parents still uh, love them. Yeah. Wait, so is the second sorry is the second half uh so the second half you always bring in the serial killer documentaries <laughs> yeah, so yes. I was like why do i do this <laughs> no no it's fine you learn a lot about serial killers. yeah uh yeah uh ariel yeah so so the second half of the pasuk is that like uh so is that a good thing i mean to cover all the time no no it's not and and then the puzzle's not saying that it's saying oh, that so it, what are it the does options, happen man? it does happen that love covers all offenses. And therefore, when you get into a fight, when you're about to get into a fight over this, uh, this thing that your enemy did to you, you should stop and realize if the person who I loved in this way did this to me, would I feel that way? And the answer is no. So it shows you that it's not the thing. That's the whole, the whole point, uh, the whole main idea according to the way I'm interpreting it is the puzzle showing you that the thing you think you're getting upset about, you're not getting upset, uh, upset about. It's not about the thing, it's about the person. Oh, I understand. I yeah. mean, you're using the second half of the puzzle to show you that if you love someone, then you won't treat them that way. Exactly. That's the contrast yeah. between the second half and the first. Yeah, and, and, and that, that's why the puzzle is not, according to the way I'm learning, the puzzle is not endorsing love covering all offenses in that case. Like maybe love shouldn't cover offenses, but the reality is it does, you know? And like, as long as it does, then you can see through the, the false layer of, of, of the, of the right. quarreling that like you're attempting to get into. So, so the, but the puzzle is not, the focus of the puzzle is not covering the uh, Peshaim. And the yeah, second. it's just using that to expose the the distorted way you're thinking about the thing that you're going to go quarrel about. I understand. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. I have to go. All right. Uh, All right thanks. You. All right. Bye. See everyone, uh, I guess, uh, either in Tehillim Shir uh, next time. <laughs> thank you. Right. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Okay.